This video is brought to you by our Patreon contributors. Our top tier contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GlassBottleOutlet.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, and GrowPockets.com. Please consider supporting our channel by joining Patreon. first thing I wanted to do was put one section of the hoop together and measure the distance on it. When I purchased this greenhouse, the owner told me it was 26 by 144 feet and just wanted to verify the span before I start laying everything out. And sure enough, it was right on the money at 26 feet across. Laying out the footprint of the building isn't overly complicated. In the back corner, I pounded in a piece of rebar, and that's used to act as an anchor for my tape measure. And then, since my tape isn't 144 feet long, I went down and marked out a halfway point at 72 feet, set that point, and then continued another 72 feet down in the same line and that got the 144 feet. Now that the long line along the eastern wall has been set, I can measure over 26 feet along the back wall at roughly a 90 degree angle and set a temporary line there. And then we use our trusty old Pythagorean theorem and get a hypotenuse of 76 and a half feet. So now I can measure down back to my midway point at the 72 feet, measure the hypotenuse at 76 and a half feet, and set that greenhouse. back corner at its proper position. From this point I can now go and measure out the other wall, basically go down again to the 72 foot mark, set a pin, and to make sure my width is good I measure across the center to the other mid mark pin from the 26 feet, set that post, and then go down to the far end another 72 feet, and also check against the 26 feet across the side. And that's all it takes to set up the outline for the building. I then went back and stretched a tape measure from one post to the next, made a nice straight line, and then marked a spot every four feet. This is where each of the bows is going to go. Originally, we were going to just bring in a post hole digger and dig out 72 holes, but with all the rock in here, I did change my mind, and we are going to dig a long trench along the entire length of the greenhouse. So the dots were sort of a useless effort, but they were used as a guideline to act as a nice straight line as we dug out the trench. It's been two years since I originally purchased the greenhouse and all the parts have been growing weeds through them. So I spent a little bit of time sorting out some of the pieces and figuring out what I had. I couldn't remember how it was all exactly supposed to go together, so I referenced some old photos and decided to set up some of the pieces to just make sure that I understood how it all worked. The bow has a coupling at the top, which just simply bolts together, makes this part of the assembly nice and easy. And then there's a cross support beam that's used to help prevent the bows from spreading out during a heavy snow load. The cross support beam is a little bit trickier to install. The bows are splayed out a little bit too far, so I have to use a ratchet or a come along to pull them in a little bit and this allows me to align the holes properly for the cross support. And then I can just release the ratchet and it springs back into its proper spot.
before I started digging the trenches for the posts, I decided to set up a couple of pieces just to make sure everything fit together the way I thought it fit together. The tractor really does come in handy for lifting the pieces and holding them in place, especially when you're working on your own trying to put a structure like this together. I did discover that the spacing between the bows are four feet. I mean, originally I thought they were six feet, so the four feet is actually a little bit better because you get some better strength out of the greenhouse if you do have a heavy snow load. I was tearing down the trial build, I noticed that the coupling on one of the pieces had a tear in its weld. It looks like it's been like this for quite a while, so I don't think it's something that I did. It probably was the original owner when they were putting it together, or it had a heavy snow load which stressed it. So as I'm putting the whole greenhouse together, I'm inspecting all of these couplings and welding them back together. As I said earlier, I was going to use an auger to drill out the post holes for each of these hoops, but I was impatient and didn't want to wait for my guy to show up, so I started digging out a few of the holes and I then canceled him from coming. I really started plucking out some large rocks that an auger just cannot get through. Before I dug the entire trench for all the hoops, I did a small section and set up a couple of hoops, once again just to see how everything would go together. One of the nice things about trenching it, it gives you plenty of space to work in and make some final adjustments where the placement of everything goes. So I can hop down into the trench, dig it out a little bit, adjust the elevations, move things back and forth, and make sure everything's in alignment nicely. Once I had a plan set up for how to trench and put everything together, I set off on my excursion of digging two very long trenches down the entire length of the greenhouse. This took me about three days to accomplish in total. I had a couple of stops, I had a broken backhoe and had to get a new fitting for it. The heat this fall has been surprisingly high and sitting out in the sun isn't too great for the back of my neck, so I just whipped up a quick sunscreen with a piece of insulation board and stuck it on the tractor and that worked surprisingly well. I ran into a section of hard pan which is essentially a mixture of very hard clay mixed with rocks and my little backhoe just isn't strong enough to rip through that. So I went down to the hardware store and bought a $15 crowbar, welded that to a little bracket and bolted it to the bucket. This works really well as a ripping arm to rip through the hard pan, it loosens it up, and then I can pull the rest out with the backhoe. At first I was just digging through it with a pickaxe, but my old tired back can only handle so much, so I let the machine do the work for me. There were a couple of rocks that I ran across that were quite large, and I had to widen the trench up probably four or five times its normal width and just keep poking at the rocks to pull them out. Again, this makes my decision of not using a post hole digger to set these posts a much easier decision because there's no way these rocks would have moved out of the way. If this rock was much bigger, I would have had to call my neighbor in with his large backhoe to pluck it out.
Once a few of these hoops are put into place, I can take and anchor this baseboard onto them. So then I just pre-drill a few holes into the board every four feet and then use some lag bolts to anchor the hoops into the board. This board is used to anchor the plastic that's draped over the greenhouse. Once all the pieces start going together, the weight of the whole greenhouse gets a little bit too much, so I can just use a pry bar to adjust a few things into place, and then I can put everything together with the lag bolts. There's a few spots where either the trench isn't deep enough or it's too deep. I can adjust the elevation by chiseling away at it with a pickaxe or filling it back in and the whole greenhouse sort of levels itself out and I can fine tune everything. Once I know each hoop is in its right spot, I can then start backfilling the trench. I don't have a plate compactor to compact this down readily available, so I'll just leave everything a little bit high and it will settle down on its own after a year or so. Before I got too far along with putting the frame up, I had a couple of truckloads of crushed granite stone dust delivered, and they just dropped it right into the middle of the greenhouse area. It makes it easier to spread it out without having to travel all over the place. This will be used to be the final grading of the greenhouse floor. It packs down fairly nicely and it's easy to rake out and level out. I think that's about enough for now. So far I have 11 of the 37 hoops in and I'm just going to keep plugging away at this. I don't think it's necessary to keep showing be installing the same hoops over and over again, but if I have anything new and exciting, I'll record that and show it in my next video. Once again, thanks for watching.